foam roller to get rid of your back pain is a great idea. But unfortunately, most people do it wrong, and when you make the most common mistakes, you can actually make your pain worse. My name's Rob Drenning, I'm a physical therapist. In this video, I'm gonna show you the three most common mistakes people make when they're trying to foam roll for low back pain, and then what you should do instead, things that'll actually help you. Okay, so let's get right to it. The first mistake that people make, and this is the most common one, is that you're actually rolling on the foam roller. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but what happens is, and what I mean by that, I'll show you. Laying down on the roller, and you lift your butt up, and you kind of roll up and down like that, okay? That's not gonna help your back pain. All you're doing in that case is rolling over the back of your spine bones. When you roll over bone, that's not gonna do anything. The muscles that are usually tight are on the side of your spine, and they're too small and deep to really get into. So all you're gonna do is roll over those bones. It's not gonna help you. In a lot of cases, that's actually gonna make you worse. So the first thing to avoid is actually rolling on the roller. What you wanna do instead is find a position that's just above your low back. Kind of hard to see with my black roller on the black carpet, but. So instead of being on the low back, I'm gonna let it go kind of to my lower ribs. I'm gonna keep my butt down on the ground. I'm gonna support my head and neck, and I'm just gonna gently arch back over the roller. Sometimes you even get a couple pops and clicks in your back when you're doing this. Then I'm gonna even go up a little higher, support my head and neck, and gently arch back over the roller. You actually wanna be above your low back to do this, and the foam roller is gonna stay still. You're not rolling anywhere on it. My hips, my butt's staying down. I'm not lifting up, trying to arch. That's gonna cause more of an abs workout, okay? So you just wanna be down on the floor, nice and still, arching back above your low back, the lower ribs and anywhere above that. Because that's the second most common mistake, is that you'll bring the roller down too low. Your low back hurts, so common sense would tell us, put the roller down low. But when you do that, I can immediately feel that my abs are getting too much of a workout. It hurts my back. It's too much pressure in a direction that your low back doesn't want to go. So when you're putting that foam roller in its still place, you're not going to roll on it. You'll know when you get it down too low because it'll start to feel like effort in a workout. Okay, you can't relax into it. You can't mobilize it. So bring that roller up higher, farther away from where you're feeling your pain so you can gently mobilize into that direction, okay? So you're gonna avoid rolling back and forth, and you're gonna avoid having the roller go down too low. The third most common mistake is that you're actually targeting the wrong areas when you're doing the roller. And part of it's related to where you're feeling your pain and what's causing it to feel the pain. The foam roller is a great tool to help release muscles. And hip muscles are the most common thing that's gonna drive pain in that low back. You can't get to the low back muscles directly with the roller, but the hips is a great way to start. So after you've done the ones that I just showed you, I want you to then go and start to foam roll your hips. And here's how I like to do it for me, for my back issues and for my patients. You're just gonna sit on the roller. And first I'm gonna start, let's say if you have pain on one side or the other, you're gonna focus on that painful side. If not, you're gonna do both sides, but I'm just gonna lean over onto one side, onto one butt cheek basically. You're just gonna nice and slowly kind of roll around. Okay, I'm gonna lean a little bit farther. If you find any of those tender spots, just real slow, go back and forth a minute on them. If you feel like, okay, that's not too bad, I don't feel too much, then you're gonna cross your leg and roll onto that side again. You'll immediately feel a lot more pressure. Then you can slowly roll up and down. I feel a lot more tenderness just when I'm doing that on myself but it's a great way to get tension onto that hip muscle. And you're just focusing kind of on the meat of, of the glute. And you can go as far to the side as you want, wherever you find those tender spots, that's where you wanna be. You can go close to the tailbone, not right on it, cause that's a bone. You don't wanna roll on that, but stay on those muscles. For this one and for the other one, I usually will say just spend a minute or two doing each one, no specific number of reps, two, three minutes if it feels good. You're gonna keep it above your back, arch back and forth, and then you're gonna slowly roll in and out of the hip muscles. Those are the top three mistakes and the two ways to do it the correct way 
are going to bring you the most relief for your back pain. So let me know in the comments how it goes for you. Any other tips or tricks that you've tried that might help somebody else.